Hey, welcome back everybody. So today, man, I got so much stuff going on here, it's stupid. So I, I've got an engine here today and I wanna to talk to you about it and it's it's an LS engine. It's a, it's, a, it's a six liter truck engine, which is a, it's a cast iron block, but it's a cast iron version of the LS motor, very strong. I also have a set of LS3 heads and pistons out of a 6.2 liter and we're going to make one motor out of this stuff so let me explain this kind of stuff to you you want to make a a really potent just a a killer street ls motor and you're looking at the ls line of motor there's there's a lot of options now the ls engines uh, most of you are familiar with them in the old days we had the old cast iron small block chevy and i've done a ton of videos on those the nice thing about the LS engines, which is the newer model, what GM calls their small block, um, the interchangeability of the new LS motor is very similar to the old small block. I mean, as far as the interchangeability of the heads and the cranks and the pistons and the blocks, and I mean, it's just, they really kind of stuck to their interchangeability format as opposed to Ford who changed everything two years and most of their stuff is completely different and you got to have a you know uh, an engineering degree to figure out you know what parts go with what GM kind of stuck with their interchangeability format with the LS engine and so you have a lot of options the other issue is with the LS motor the LS version uh, configuration that GM uh, has been running for quite a while now it is a very, very durable engine. It is just so good in its design and its ability to make power and be durable and be economical. And it's just, it really is a phenomenal engine and an extremely well-designed power plant that can take lots of horsepower and deliver that horsepower for a long period of time and be very durable without breaking. So, <laughs> I mean, you can break anything, but it's just a really, really good motor. So we're, we're doing kind of a combination build here and mixing and matching some parts and so forth. And I want to talk to you about this just so you get an idea of some of the possibilities that you have with these LS engines. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So what we have is we have a six liter block, which is a cast iron truck block. So this is our six liter engine. Now the six liter engine has a four inch bore and of course it has it's it's the cast iron version of the ls engine so it has you know all of the design features of the ls it has the six bolt main so there's four bolts here and then we have cross bolted mains in both sides we have a skirted block where the block actually comes down and encompasses it it gives support to these main caps now a lot of times manufacturers will do that with aluminum blocks to give the caps extra strength because you know the block is aluminum well what we have here the six liter truck motor is a cast iron block which is really durable and so we have this big webbing coming down and we have six bolt mains just like pretty much all the ls engines so that it makes the lower end of this engine really really durable you can put a lot of a lot of power and of course it has these forged steel caps down here which also makes it very durable as opposed to the cast iron caps that the earlier blocks had. So a very durable lower end to say the least. So the next thing I want to draw your attention to, and obviously, I mean, we've cleaned this block up. This is for a customer. We've cleaned this block up. We put it through the VAT process and so forth, and it has the stock bore in it. Now the stock bore on the six liter is, is four inches. So it has a it has a hyperutectic piston from the factory, and these are the pistons and rods that came out of it. Now, as far as the rods go, the LS engine has these powdered metal, what we call a cracked rod. So when we say cracked rod, what we're talking about here is the parting line where the cap meets the rod. It's actually not a machined surface, it's a break. So what they do is they, they make the rod they manufacture the rod as one piece and then they literally just break the cap off. What this does is it gives a more true uh, uh, big end bore on the rod. Now the one thing about these rods is they're not interchangeable or they're not resizable or repairable. It's kind of a disposable rod but you can see 
they literally made this as one piece and then cracked the rod in half and the parting line is a break. Now, it's real critical on these types of rods that you don't ever put this cap on backwards. That's one thing you need to be aware of. If you actually put this cap on backwards and torque it, you will actually ruin the rod and you'll have to replace it. But these rods um, out of this six liter, it's, it's a well-known fact that these things can handle big horsepower. Uh, I have a buddy of mine who has one of this exact engine and a sand rail with a turbocharger on it. And he's running 800 plus horsepower and he's been doing that for three years with these rods and he's never had any issues with them. So they can take pretty good, good horsepower. The stock factory pistons are also good uh, to really high horsepower. I've heard some claims say these are good up to a thousand horsepower. Although I haven't substantiated that, I don't know for a fact if that's true, but that's what I've heard. But I certainly know that seven, eight hundred horsepower is no problem for these pistons. Now, here's what we're going to do with this engine. This is kind of cool. This is where this gets cool. So we're going to use the rods, and again, it's a full floater. It has a, 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 a C-clip or a round clip in here, so it's a full floating piston pin, which is a really good design for performance. So it's a full floating pin. And we also have um, another set of pistons for a 6.2 liter. So what we're going to do, and this is kind of a common upgrade, upgrade for the cast iron 6 liter block. Now some of the earlier LS engines that were aluminum, you really are limited on how much you can bore this. So if we take this bore out 65 thousandths, a uh, little over 60 63 to 65 thousandths oversize, which you can get away with on this block, you basically have a 6.2 liter. So the customer brought me a brand new set of 6.2 liter pistons, and of course they're, they have the full floating wrist pin and the C-clips and all that in them, and it's just a flat top with two valve reliefs, but one thing you'll notice is the if we try to put the 6.2 liter piston in that bore, uh, there ain't no way it's going to fit. And that's because the 6.2 liter, it basically has the same stroke as the 6 liter, but what they did is they bored the cylinder out to a larger volume. They bored the cylinder out to 65 thousandths over, which is what this piston is. So we're going to take this 6 liter block, we're going to punch the cylinder 65 thousandths, we're going to put the 6.2 liter pistons on the 6.0 rods, and, and there's nothing wrong with that because the 6.0 and the 6.2 share the same rod. It's the same exact rod. And we're basically going to build ourselves a 6.2 liter, um, upgrade the camshaft, and then we move on to the heads. So one of the things that is also doable is we can mix and match heads on this thing. So what we have here is the heads that we're going to put on our, our new six liter. And these are um, an LS3 head. Now an LS3, this is a little different. If, you, if you're familiar with the, the LS1 heads, they have a cathedral port. Well, if you look at the intake port here, you'll notice that this does not have a cathedral port. It just has a large rectangular port head, a really tall port head here. Now, I want to draw your attention to something really cool, and I mentioned it in my last video for the GMC 305 build. So if we put this LS3 head, now we're going to talk a little bit more about this head here in a minute, but if we put this LS3 head up next to our old cast iron 305 V6 heads, some of the similarities that you see are going to be um, pretty amazing. So I hear a lot of guys say, well, you know, GM copied Ford when they made the LS motor. And yeah, that may or may not be true. It's probably not true. And here's why that's probably not true and what people don't realize. And that is that a lot of the engineers that have worked in the industry coming up with the designs and the configurations of these engines, a lot of those engineers actually worked for Ford and GM and Pontiac and Chrysler. You know, those engineers that designed some of the Ford heads or some of the early Mopar heads or the Chevy heads, a lot of those engineers changed companies. And so while you could 
argue, yeah, you know, Chevy copied Ford or Ford copied Mopar or whatever. The reality is, is that that's really not true. The reality is, is that it, it's kind of up to the engineers who are working for the company at that time. And this is really how a lot of this came about. A lot of the engineers that worked for Ford actually also worked for Mopar, and some of the Mopar engineers worked for Ford and GM, and they all changed jobs over the years. And so a lot of these head designs are the, are the brainchild and the, and the mind of, of some of what I would say some of the most brilliant engineers that right have ever been in the industry, and they worked for all these car companies. Um, so you get a lot of cross-pollinization of designs that doesn't necessarily mean that you know Ford uh, you know F Ford got broken into by some you know a cat burglar or some guy put on black clothes and he broke into the Ford you know design room in the middle of the night right and he stole these plans and then they made an LS motor okay well that sounds very like provocative <laughs> The reality is, is that's really not what happened. Um, it's it's not like the, the engineers are trying to keep this a secret from the other companies. I mean, maybe at first they are, but the reality is, is most of these engineers have worked for one or more. Some of them have work, worked for all three of the big three companies. And so they've taken designs. And I know GM took a bunch of design engineers back when they had Oldsmobile and Buick and Cadillac and Pontiac and they had a bunch of different divisions they actually took a bunch of designs from each other and the engineers actually worked together on a lot of projects so to say that you know GM stole Ford's design or Chrysler stole you know this from this other company you know what to be honest with you if when, when you really understand the workings of how these companies function and how the engineers actually work together and change jobs a lot that's just a bunch of nonsense so you guys that are posting on there, they stole this design from Ford. You know what? You don't even know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I don't want to be rude to you, but you really don't know what you're talking about. The reality is, is that these engineering designs are common knowledge from all these companies, and they make decisions based on what will make the most money at the time and you know what they have available to them. That's, 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 as, that's all there is to it. So let's take a look at these ports. I want you to look at the LS3 port on this head. You know, take a look at it. Now the cathedral port, it has a cathedral shape up here at the top on the LS1. What they did on the LS3 is they went ahead and opened this up and they put a huge port here. Now this port is phenomenally well flowing. These heads are amazing and, and one of the reasons I want to kind of showcase this is because when the LS3 came out on, in 2008 on the Corvettes, these things were making really big power. And that was in stock form. They were making like 430 something horsepower, completely stock, detuned in the Corvette. You can port these out and make them flow way better than they do in stock form. And you can get probably over 300 CFMs of flow out of this, which is amazing. And so these will support, especially if you, if you port them out and boost them, these things will support 1,000 horsepower plus. So it's a really good design. Well, look at this old. 1962 design on this V6. Hmm, interesting. This was 1962. This is 2008. 1962. 2008. These are GMC heads, my friend that were on a 1962 truck motor. So, you know, when you hear guys say, well, you know, Ford, they stole Ford's design. That's nonsense. These are GMC heads. They were doing this big port thing back in the early 60s on their truck motors. So, also the valve design, you know, the, the small block Chevy, one of the problems with the small block Chevy head, and we got a bunch of them, and then when I say there's craziness going on here, these are all jobs for customers I got lined up. I can't do a video on everything. So this is a Chevy head for a customer, but I want you to look at the valve configuration. We got exhaust, intake, intake, and then in the middle here we got exhaust, exhaust. This was always kind of a problem for these early small black heads. You had a lot of heat here and they were prone to cracking there. So here's a small block Ford head, and if you take a look at this, you have exhaust, intake, 
exhaust intake, exhaust intake, exhaust intake. So we didn't have two exhaust valves next to each other here. They separated, they put an exhaust valve here and an exhaust valve here, as opposed to having the two valves in the center here. Well, if we go back to 1962 on this truck head, and, and they even did this earlier, you have exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So they separated back in the late 50s, early 60s, they were separating these valves on these heavy duty truck motors. Look at the LS head. Exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake. They separated the exhaust valves here. And so the Ford guys look at this and go, oh, they copied Ford. Uh, not really. It just depends on what engineer was working on the job. So that's one thing I wanted to point out because there's a lot of confusion about that kind of stuff. Again, just to reiterate, we are going to take an LS3 head, which is a 2008 and up Corvette head, with a giant intake port capable of well over 300 CFMs, a 6.0 truck block, bore it out 65 thousandths and make it a 6.2 liter, put a radical M in it, and we're going to have one bad to the bone motor. Okay, so I realize this is kind of random, but for those of you that are into LS motors, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with these things. And we also have a, um, we're using the, the stock, uh, six liter crankshaft for this thing and it works it works just fine we're going to get our 6.2 liter from boring that oversize so if you're interested in ls stuff okay so these are the some things that that you need to think about another thing about this uh head we also have on the ls3 head it has huge intake and exhaust valves so we got a lot of airflow volume and of course it has the heart shaped chamber that's a really advanced design that's very conducive to quick burn time and very efficient burning which gives us good power and really good fuel economy so it's basically a race head from the factory so when it comes to LS engines you can do I mean you can mix and match this stuff and you can really make yourself a very decent power plant for a very good price once we're done with this engine, or actually the customer is going to build this, but honestly, the machine work to clean the block and check it out and bore it and do the heads with all the gaskets and everything, and the, including the pistons that he got, he's probably going to have maybe twelve to fifteen hundred bucks into this motor. Now that doesn't include his labor to assemble the motor and all that stuff. We just polish the crankshaft. We're using the the stock six liter nodular iron crank which is very very durable can take really high horsepower so these engines are phenomenal if you want to build a really killer street motor um, also of course you have the benefit of running a computer and fuel injection uh, the LS3 actually had a much larger fuel injector so if you get an LS3 manifold with the injector set up it bolts right on and you got really big fuel capacity so there's a lot of advantages to this type of motor and you don't want to limit yourself because there's so many possibilities with an LS motor and the fact that there's a lot of possibilities also means that you could put the wrong combination together and have too low of a compression ratio and stuff like that so you got to be careful when you're mixing and matching this stuff that you get it you, you get it right so I hope you enjoyed this I know this is kind of random but I just had these parts here and I thought we'd talk about it so if you want to support this channel, go to www.patron front slash forward slash my vintage iron 7512. And I'm asking for donations. I'm asking for a monthly pledge from you guys so we can do a bunch more of this LS stuff. I want to do a bunch of builds. So if you like this channel and you want to support it, go there for me. We also have my next video coming up is the 305. Uh, V6 head installation. I've already got the video done where we rebuilt the heads. I'll be posting that any day now. That's going to be part six, I believe. So stay tuned for that. It's all coming up. I also have um, on February 5th a drawing for all of my patrons for a performance cam and lifter set. One of you guys is going to win it. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, support this channel. And I will talk to you very soon, I promise.